Suppose a firm is expected to increase dividends by 20% in one year and by 15% in two years. After that, dividends will increase at a rate of 5% per year indefinitely. If the last dividend was $1 and the required return is 20%, what is the price of the stock? And here we have a note that says, remember that we have to find the present value of all expected future dividends to be able to determine the price of the, of the stock. So to determine the price of the stock, we need to identify future expected dividends and we need to discount them back to the present to get the stock price. So the first thing that we need to do is just draw a, a timeline to be able to uh, determine or visualize what we are dealing with. So here we have a timeline, we have time zero, we have the end of year one, the end of year two, and then let's do year three. The problem says that, um, that the last dividend was one dollar. The last dividend was one dollar, that is your D0. So be very careful if you, hear, if you hear the last dividend was or the company just paid a dividend of, that is your D0. So D0 here equals to 1. We know here, the problem is telling us that the uh, firm is expected to increase dividends by 20% in one year and 15% in two years. So here, the, um, uh, after, um, after time zero, the dividend is going to increase by 20%, and then after year one, it's going to increase by 15%. The problem is also telling us that the dividends will increase at a rate of 5% per year indefinitely. Okay, so this is your G, that 5% is your G. So after year two, the dividends are going to grow constantly over time at a uh, percent of, um, at, a, at a 5%. Okay, so uh, now let's determine the uh, dividend payments uh, that uh, this investment is promising. Uh, but before we do that, let's just kind of uh, highlight where the dividends become constant, where they're not constant. So from time zero to year two, we have non-constant dividends. From year two until forever, okay, we have constant dividend growth. And the growth rate is G of 5%. So it's very important um, to be able to identify uh, when the dividends start growing constantly over time. So now what we need to do is determine the expected dividends. The first dividend is D1. So uh, D1, uh, basically we can determine D1 by just taking that $1 uh, dividend and multiplying it by 1 plus 0 0.2. So D1 equals 2, 1 times 1 plus 0 0.2 because that $1 is going to grow at 20%, which will give us a dividend of $1.2. So D1 equals to 1.2. The problem tells us that the dividend after year one is gonna grow by 15%. So to get to D2, we take D1, which is 1.2, and we multiply by one plus 0 0.15, which will give us a dividend of $1.38. So this is D2. D2 here is 1.38. We do know that after year two, the dividends are going to grow constantly over time at 5%. So we can determine D3, D4, D5, D6, D forever, and then we uh, basically discount all of the, those dividends back to the present. However, that is uh, going to be uh, very uh, time consuming and probably nobody wants to do that. So we have a shortcut to be able to determine the present values of all dividends after year two. So 
year two, at the end of year two, the dividends are going to grow constantly over time, which means that we can use the dividend growth model. The dividend growth model at the end of year two. So here what we can do is determine P2 which is the price at the end of year two. That price is going to be the present value of all dividends expected to be received after year two. So this is kind of a nice shortcut. Instead of determining all the dividends after year two, we can just determine the price at the end of year two using the dividend growth model or the constant dividend growth model. And then that price will represent all of the uh, dividends after year two discounted back to the present. So the constant dividend growth model says that the price equals to the next dividend divided by R minus G. So here we need to determine P2. P2 would be the next dividend divided by R minus G. The next dividend after year two is D3, okay? So we take D3 and we divide it by R minus G. D3 is basically D2, which is 1.38, that's going to grow at 5%. So we take 1.38 and we multiply by 1 plus 0 0.05. R is the required return on this investment and from the problem we do know that the required return is 20%. So this would be 0 0.2, so R is 0 0.2 minus G of 0 0.05. This gives us a price of 9.66. So here P2 is 9.66. Okay, so now that we have identified all of our cash flows, so uh, we are expected to get D1 of 1.2, D2 of 1.38, and then of course we're getting other dividends after year two, but um, to uh, kind of use a shortcut that we have, the constant dividend growth model says that the price at the end of year two uh, equals to 9.66. That 9.66 is basically the present value uh, at the end of year two of all dividends expected to be received after year two. So these are all of our cash flows. Now we are ready to determine uh, P0. Remember um, or notice that I haven't talked about D0, which is one dollar. When you are trying to determine the price of this investment today, and the dividend, the D0 was already paid, uh, that is not going to be something that you get if you were to buy the stock. So if you were to buy the stock today at time zero, then that dividend, you're not going to get it. The D0, you're not going to get it. You're going to get D1, D2, and, and so on. So that D0 is irrelevant to you. It's the person who has, who, who is selling you the stock that is receiving that D0. So this is not something that you should include in your calculation. So be careful, do not include D0 as D0, that $1, is not something that you're going to receive um, uh, if you buy the stock today because that dividend was already paid uh, to the person uh, that is selling, that's going to be selling the stock. Um, usually uh, firms look at who is um, who is uh, holding uh, the stock uh, two business days before they actually pay. So, uh, so usually the seller of the stock would be the one receiving that dividend and not the person buying the stock at time zero. So here uh, we can proceed to buy in uh, to, uh, to determining P0. P0 is basically the uh, discounted uh, cash flow. So all of the cash flows that we are uh, expected to receive uh, discounted back to the present. So here to just write a formula, uh, P0 would equal to D1 divided by 1 plus R to the power 1 plus D2 plus P2 divided by 1 plus R to the power 2. Okay, we're just discounting um, uh, the cash flows back to the present. We use the required return on the investment to discount back. So please be careful. Do not use that G, uh, the growth in dividends. It's irrelevant here. Uh, we need to discount using the required return of investment. This would equal to 1.2 divided by 1 plus 0 0.2 to the power 1 plus D2 of 1.38 plus 9.66 to the uh, divided by 1 plus 0 0.2 to the power 2 
which will give us $8.67. So if you're looking at this investment, uh, the maximum uh, that you need to pay for it, if you are, uh, if you want a return of uh, of 20%, is 8.67. You can also get this using the financial calculator once you have all of the cash flows. So, uh, so once you have determined the price at the end of year two, uh, you just use the NPV function to be able to determine the uh, present value or the net present value. So this is what you would input. So the first thing we do is just clear our work. So set a CF, second CEC, and then you hit CF0. CF0 is the cash flow time zero. Remember that dividend at a time uh, that dividend that you got of one dollar at time zero. That is something that is gonna go to the seller of the stock and not you if you were to buy the stock today. So we do not account for that uh, in our um, calculations. So always ignore D0 if you are trying to determine the price of the stock today. Uh, next, we go to the first dividend and uh, C01, we have calculated it, that is the 1.2. So if we look here, that is the D1 which is 1.2, so 1.2, enter down arrow and you're asked for uh, cash flow year two for cash flow year two you add uh, these two together so you're getting d2 and you get in the 9.66 this equals to 11.04 so what that's what that's your cash flow uh year two so 11.04 enter down arrow hit npv you're asked for the i i is uh 20 enter down arrow and then cpt and you have a price of um, 8.6667, which is similar to what we what we got.